All right, all, please um, just hang tight. We're, it looks like we're missing um, the DDC rep. Um, Desiree will be here today. Someone else is in her place, but that person hasn't joined the meeting yet. So um, thank you all for being here. Hi, everybody. Um, Parker, who is going to present in um, Desiree's place today, just emailed asking for the link. So hopefully he'll join soon. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Yes. OK, thanks. Uh, there's Parker. Hi, Parker. Hi, sorry about that. Uh, we had the wrong link. But thank you for your patience. Yeah, no worries. Um, welcome. I guess, yeah, let's let's go ahead and get started then. Um, welcome everybody to the June 2023 CAD meeting. I've kind of lost count, might be the 35th or the 34th. Um, but thank you as always for 34th. Thank you, thanks Parker. But thanks to all for making it. And um, I know a few of you told me, well, not a few, but a few CAG members told me they couldn't make it today. But um, without any further ado, I will turn it over to Parker. Great, thank you so much, Paula. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. All right, and can everyone see that okay? Yep. Great, thank you. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Parker McClure. I work with uh, Desiree and the community engagement team for the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Desiree is taking some paid time off this week, so I am filling in for her at the 34th CAG uh, meeting. Um, so I know everyone's familiar with the project area uh, overview for each of the three projects. Um, these are the focus areas for today. Um, we have uh, construction updates, environmental updates, as usual, hire, uh, one hiring note, um, some access and signage. And then we'll go to questions. It's a shorter presentation than last month's, uh, just because we've now gone over the phasing approach update. Uh, and we covered the fill questions at the CB3 meeting this month. So for hiring, uh, DDC is hosting a job fair in Brooklyn uh, in July, on July 24th. And IPC will be attending that event. Um, to looking for uh, people to work on Esker. So please share this with anyone you think might be interested and we're happy to share the flyer with anyone who wants it. Um, for access, the one thing that we wanted to highlight is that 
So the East 6th Street entrance had previously had an issue with uh, this, this pathway had become very uh, uneven and was a trip hazard. And also there was a large amount of uh, like large puddles that would form every time it rained here, making it almost impassable. So the contractor has repaved this path and it's become really nice. And even checking after it rained, um, it's not having the same flooding issues as before. And so now we'll just get into the construction updates. So this is the normal overview of contracts. Not too much has changed since last month. Um, it's pretty much all the same, except uh, I believe gates 10 and 13 are new for project area two. And as many of you know from last month, we said that uh, PA2 Stuyvesant Cove Park north of East 20th Street was opening. That is that is now open. It's been open since Memorial Day weekend. So for Project Area 1 construction activities, this again is pretty much the same as last month. Construction is moving along and on schedule. Uh, the biggest changes are that the East Houston Street South Ramp demolition has been completed now. And as many of you know, uh, fill material deliveries have be begun. They started coming in earlier this month by barge. Um, and as I mentioned, we went into detail answering most of the CAGS questions at the CB3 meeting on June 15th, which uh, is available. You can see the find the presentation on our website um, and on the recording on the CB3 YouTube page. Um, so yes, like I uh, just mentioned, those are available on our website and the CB3 YouTube page. Um, we will be sending a formal response to all of the questions uh, soon once Desiree returns. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking questions about the compost yard. So still the most of up-to-date information is in the CAGLED letter from August 4th, 2021, um, which was a letter from Parks to the CAG, which states that the compost yard will return uh, once construction at the site has completed. And then for the flyover bridge, I know that um, I think it was Wendy had been asking about that at the last meeting, and DDC will be presenting on the flyover bridge to the community boards in the fall. Um, that's a separate contract, but they'll, they'll be presenting an update uh, this fall. So moving on to project area two. So this is a updated map with the construction areas. So as you can see, the area north of 20th Street is now open. Uh, and then the southern portion is closed. But as you, uh, you'll see on the next slide, it's set to open this summer, um, there, possibly late July, and then Murphy Brothers Playground still under construction. So like I mentioned, uh, the area north of this is 20th Street. And so the area north of there is open. It has plantings. Um, it's very nice if you haven't gotten a chance to check it out. And then area two south of 20th Street is set to open later this summer um, without plantings. And then they'll be put, putting in the plantings this fall. And then the Greenway south of 18th Street um, with down to the pinch point is still closed. We thought it was going to open this summer, but due to a DOT project, we, we are unable to open that. Um, so then that is, so that's now in been turned over to DOT. So moving on to environmental reporting um, and air quality updates. So the, these are the locations for the air quality monitors in project area one. Um, it's the same as last month when we had added the 15 and 16 in the lower project area. So for PA1 air quality, the, in this is reporting on May, 
Um, there were 140 exceedances, 71 of which were PM 2.5 and 69 of which were PM 10. You can see the breakdown by location here. Um, there were a, was a significantly higher amount down in the lower area of the uh, construction site between Montgomery and Jackson Street. This is also the area where um, there aren't many Esker construction activities currently, but it's adjacent to uh, Pier 42 upland construction, as well as the FDR on-ramp. There's a lot of um, happening there. And then the there were more also near between Jackson and the Williamsburg Bridge. And uh, they go kind of go down as you go north in the project area. The exceedances were between range from two to 104 minutes. And there were various causes for the exceedances, but the PMCM is still reviewing the contractor's report from May. Um, on that note, due to the high volume of exceedances in May, the PMCM is still processing um, this report to determine the full extent of the exceedances um, and just ensuring the accuracy. This is part of why we don't have the data in the typical chart format that we have for this month. Given the increase in exceedances, the PMCM met with the contractor in May and developed a plan to reduce exceedances moving forward. So far, the number of exceedances has been generally reduced in June, um, notwithstanding the wildfire smoke. Um, and the PMCM and IPC are both committed to environmental quality and community health and are aware of the issue and are actively working to resolve this, this moving forward and reduce the amount of exceedances. Um, and the 24-hour time-weighted average still for May did not surpass the permissible exposure limit for the month. So moving on to project area two, um, you can see the, the locations of each of the monitors. Um, if you remember last month, one of them had been moved down to Murphy Brothers Playground to more accurately track the construction areas. So uh, for P P Project Area 2, there was a, in the Solar 1 area, there was just one exceedance. Um, and then in, there were more exceedances down in the Murphy Brothers Playground area. Um, the PMCM believes that there that the in, these exceedances may be due to the location of the air quality monitors and is investigating. Uh, and the PMCM has scheduled a meeting with the contractor for next week to further investigate the number and duration of these exceedances. And then uh, lastly, we're just moving on to parallel conveyance construction progress. So parallel conveyance, um, as you may remember, it's they're focusing the construction activities in this lower area of the project areas because they're sort of spread out throughout uh, the overall escrow project area. Um, the water main work on Water Street between Jackson and Gouverneur Slip East is nearly completed with just a few final connections to make. Um, between the new distribution main. Um, and then they are continuing water main replacement now on Jackson Street between South Street and Water Street. Uh, soon they'll be beginning utility relocation on Water Street between Jackson and Governor Slip East where they've completed the water main work. Um, and they, they will be soon be beginning some test pits along South Street. At the second location, Second, third, and fourth locations, they're doing test bed operations um, to identify where the subsurface utilities are and what the ground conditions are. And then at the fifth location up here at 18th Street and Avenue C, uh, there's test bed operations as well as uh, field investigations to locate where the interceptor sewer is underground. Um, and then there's no work at the sixth location at this time. And so that is all we have uh, for updates today. And so I guess now we can go to questions. 
Uh, Frank? Hey, Parker, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? All right, thank you. Um, just had a quick question. Uh, well, two, actually. Um, so as you noted, uh, for the permissible exposure uh, levels between Montgomery and Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, that there really isn't much ESCR work happening. Um, I've been running into this issue uh, since the beginning of construction for Pier 42's uh, park. And I don't really, and I'm not gonna throw this at you in terms of how do I solve this, but like, I'm, I'm really unclear how the way this is integrated between the two projects, because uh, all the kinds of measures that are happening in East River Park, like spraying down um, sediment, or um, in some cases, it looks like sand in Pier 42, that's not happening. There's no netting or tarping. Um, but it's it's complicated, at least from my perspective, because if I address that with, uh, and usually it's with Desiree, um, it's not an ESCR related matter. Um, mm -hmm. But it feels like the construction team in Pier Forty Two are just doing whatever they want, and I don't I don't fully understand what their requirements are and why it doesn't um, mesh more similarly with the way it's happening in East River Park. And I get that some of it's because, it, you know, it's a, there's a difference between digging up um, uh, soil uh, in East River Park versus uh, Pier 42, but I just, I'm, I'm confused because when I see these uh, levels and it, and it keeps happening, uh, mm -hmm. what, am I supposed to like, who, how am I really supposed to get this address so that we can ensure that residents of Gouverneur Gardens and Vladek aren't just kind of ignored because the oversight in these meetings are really about, uh, you know, East River Park. Right. So, I mean, I guess Pier 42, the project is being run by EDC. And so if perhaps- I mean, the CCL there is great. He's a nice guy, but like, it's just a whole different ball game. Dealing right. With. Yeah, I'm not sure what their like reporting requirements are or what their procedures are, but if, you know, we could reach out to them again, we've tried, but also if you wanted to try and, you know, talk to them and perhaps Yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll, I'll think I'll, I'll I'll pointedly just keep following up until I get an answer on that. Um Yeah. Because it just seems weird like you know, you guys are, you have your, your, um, you know, your, uh, what do I want to say, uh, your air quality monitor stations. But again, like, I'm just feeling like most of this is not even part of your project. So it's just sort of like, well, it's nice to know, but then there's not much that happens afterwards. Right. Um, all right, that's fine. Uh, my other quick question for you is, um, are you aware about a Brooklyn Construction Career and Training Resource Fair coming up on July 24th? Yes, that we have the um, this. So okay, Frank, I, I might have missed it. But... Yeah. Right when you joined the yeah. meeting, Frank, he moved, he switched slides. So you okay. just. <laughs> Sorry about that. IPC this. will be there. <laughs> no, and so my question is, thanks for that, because I, I had an, a, a meeting right before a phone call, so I came a few minutes late. But my question on this is, how how is this being distributed? Because uh, normally, I feel like, at least even within the CAG, we would get this, and I don't remember seeing it distributed. Uh, and my concern is that, is this a... Um, uh, is this is there a change now with distributing these types of notices where is DDC now just sending them to building managers or uh, I'm just curious why and for example this never crossed my desk right so we per I'm pretty sure Desiree presented or mentioned this at the CB3 meeting earlier this month I'll have to double check but then um, I'm not sure how DDC is distributing it. We have had this, we just uh, tabled in Corlea's Hook Park uh, and had these flyers. Uh, I know that the IPC has Parker. an employee who 
is uh, distributing these flyers along with other IPC specific flyers, but I'll have to go take that back and ask DDC about how they're publicizing the event. Yeah, um, Frank, I'm sorry, can I? Uh, yeah, yeah, please, ahead, Vanessa. Vanessa. Sorry, let me just butt in. Um, I had dropped off actually these flyers to the Governor Cardin's management office, I believe on Tuesday, along with the bulletin. So um, I guess maybe check in with. Yeah, well, that's my question actually, because uh, is I'm just wondering if this is now a change, if 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 you guys are only notifying <laughs> management, um, because that that really, I will say, if that is the new course of action, uh, mm -hmm. it's a bit problematic. Uh, and I'm not going to speak for Gouverneur Gardens as much as I'm going to say collaboratively oh. working with the residential leaders. Some of the management, um, they're just not as up to date. Mm -hmm. And also uh, as for, I mean, in my case, uh, uh, I'm the president of Gouverneur Gardens and there are other uh, communication channels that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just sorry to say that sometimes it's not always effective with management. So that's why I'm asking, like, is this now... The new policy that you guys are only sending them to management companies. I think it was also included in the weekly Pima email. Yes. Distribution. Okay. 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 If you don't mind, it's Demry. Oh yeah. Um. So um. On this aspect of this communication, I believe there is an understanding that when these uh, publication comes up. A member of the teams will be of the member of the CAG team will be receiving it from your team, uh, so that they be aware and they can uh, advise uh, interesting party who want to participate in this program. So they will have the opportunity to bring that to their front in advance. Um, so by all means, let's let's keep that track. Um, this communication that you have here for this event. Please send it out to them and for future upcoming events, let's keep them on the communication so they have it. Thank you. Yep. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think just my point is, is that it, it it's just not advisable to only rely upon management for dispersal of these types of things. For and sure. In this case, we have a CAG and, you know, uh, I'm sure I'm on his email list and I get that it's on that weekly update, but uh, something like this is, uh, for at least from my perspective, it's, it's it's important. It's kind of some of the advocacies that we've been having through this CAG on hiring. So anyway, um, thank you very much. And, and so thank we, you, and Park, and Parker, yeah. just for clarification, um, we are not stopping the communication as we are right now to the other entity. We will keep that and we'll just make sure that the CAG is included in that communication. Thank for you. Sure. Okay. And we're happy to continue to distribute this, um, the events on the 24th, so we can bring you more flyers and- um, No, I'm good on my development. But, All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem, thank you. Sandra, do you have a question? Uh, sorry, yes, yes, I did. This is my um, project area too, though. Um, I was packed there on Wednesday night and the wall is wrapped. Um, in plastic, pretty much the whole length, and I'm I'm wondering like that's from the bicycle side, and I was just wondering why that was. Um, Be okay. I'm not, yes, it's because of the graffiti. You know, kids being actually painting all over the world. We're trying to cover it to protect kids from painting and do putting stuff on the wall. So is that a, a permanent solution? <laughs> no, it's not. It just until. Uh, we give it back to the to park department and they can figure out how they're going to deal with that. But for now, we are trying to protect the wall by having them stop putting graffitis on the wall. Because I, I'm, I'm guessing there's no security cameras or I, I just wonder what's the long-term solution? You're leaving it up to parks to decide or? Damri, do you have any idea? So the long-term solution for this is that it will get turned over to uh, one of the city agency who will do the maintenance and protection and the cleaning and all the other aspects. As we are constructing right now, we are we're just covering the the wall with this what you see there as the plastic to prevent uh, graffiti at this time because there is a dedication that requires cleaning within a certain period of time, and with the construction evolved as it is and how invasive 
it is, it becomes tedious to come back and meet those requirements for cleaning. So the best course of action right now is to try to protect it best possible. And uh, as we get to the point where we're gonna open it up, up to the general public, we are also gonna have the entity who is gonna be taking over the, uh, the aspect of protecting and cleaning and all these other things that will be necessary. So at that point in time, you're gonna have an exposed wall um, where the plastic will be removed. But for now, this is a temporary measure that's going to remain in place for a period of time. Thank you. Yeah, it does seem like it's going to need a more robust solution. Um, there, there is a program in place, um, but it's not finalized by the city as yet. So for now, um, like I said, we're just going to keep this there. Once we understand that the program has been finalized, of uh, who is going to be the responsible party, we will at that point in time, we will take a different course of action. Um, and also we had a, a meeting, uh, a community board meeting just last week, and some of the members noted that the tracks for the rolling gates were filled with asphalt. And I just brought up some concerns about what the program is to make sure gates are running properly. Um, so the, let me clarify that for you. So right now we are in discussion with uh, parks and DOT for uh, a solution for covering the track so that this way you don't have what we'll consider as a trip hazard. The asphalt filling that is there is a, a temporary measures to eliminate trip and fall as there's a deep um, gap between the uh, track of where the asphalt is sitting right now. So this is temporary. Also, just to be mindful at this time, those gates are not expected to be operated until the entire section of the flood protection is completed. And that will possibly be uh, towards the end of this year for this section of the of the project. Mm -hmm. and, and sorry, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Sandra McKee, Chair of the Land Use and Waterfront Committee for CB6. Um, <clears throat> so, Yes, and they, there was concern of, you know, how often. I'm sure that you'll publish some sort of document that lets the community know how they're being, um, when they're being confirmed that they operate um, and who's going to be operating them. It, it seems like Project Area 2 is, could be used as, a, as an example for it's a learning process for the rest of this work. Um, and I, know I would like to, sorry, I would like to think that once it's finalized, um, we will communicate with our uh, IGA group um, and Parker and myself, along with our, my IGA, IGA group, we're going to make a determination to make sure that we give the proper notification. And, uh, um, I would like to think that, yes, the uh, CAG will be informed of the responsible party and the expectation. And and sorry, I have a few more comments. I, I noticed all of the planting beds have fences around them. Is that going to be the same design for the whole waterfront? It is for the uh, for the Stife Cove parks. I cannot confirm at this time for the remaining uh, parks, um, but we can look into that and get an answer for you. It's it's what we call a pipe rail uh, system that between the uh, the pathway. So it prevents uh, uh, park growers from walking in the planting area. It's a, it's a deterrent, actually. It's not there to prevent them because, as you can see, it's a low fence. But it's a deterrent to keep people off walking in on the it, plant system. It, it doesn't actually keep out dogs, which is probably more of a concern than people. But um, I know it's something you might want to consider. Also, it makes it very difficult to maintain the plantings. but. I'm sure you've reviewed this with um, the people at Stuyvesant Cove Park. So um, the, I, entire, the entire EDC, uh, the uh, Stuyvesant Cove Park, our design engineer, um, all the other CD agency had already weighed in on, the, on this concept. And this is the final concept that we have in place for construct. So I myself are leading on the construction end. So me, we are moving forward with the construction aspect. There were some changes that was made earlier on uh, this year for the uh, for this pipe rail system, where it will it will allow some location where uh, of the 
people who are going to be uh, upkeep in the park will have access to walk through without having to jump over these pipe wheel system. And I understand the concern with uh, park goers and dogs, but um, the allowance is to allow for it to happen with, uh, with the understanding that the party who is going to be maintaining the parks, they will have some aspect on how to deal with that. So um, we understand that the Solar One folks is going to be the park operator, and they will have some means and method and procedure in place as for how to maintain the park itself and anything that is necessary. Um, it will not be a construction aspect. Hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the stack um, moving forward is Diane, Wendy, and then Christine. So Diane, go ahead. Um, I, I'm going to defer to Christine if she's available because we're probably going to ask some of the same questions. So I'll let her go first. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Diane. And hi, this is Christina from the Lower East Side Ecology Center. I'm uh, on my phone, so I'm not going to turn my um, screen on. But um, I just really have a comment uh, about the presentation that was given in the compost yard, uh, because I feel that was re this really dated information that was shared with the CAG. Um, the last we heard from the city is that we have a commitment now that was uh, put in writing by uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Yoshi uh, that the compost yard will be constructed during ESCO. So it's not like returning after the completion of ESCO. It's part of ESCO, it's part of the construction. And um, I want to just reiterate uh, that uh, if indeed the southern part of East River Park uh, will get opened in 2024, we expect a compost yard to be opened alongside the amphitheater and the other amenities that are being created. That's that's my comment, and I'll leave it there, and I'll give it back to Diane. Um, and just to comment on that, I think that there needs to be a meeting with uh, Parks and DSNY, um, just we because those plans have not been finalized, so it's not for DDC to answer it this time. And the most yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, but there needs to be a meeting with uh, the Ecology Center, DDC, and Parks. Mm -hmm. Sanitation has given the comments that they are uh, going to give for this construction. We mm -hmm. have given DDC conceptual ideas for the compost yard nine months ago that we shared with Parks. Parks has agreed with them. They have given them to DDC, and we haven't heard anything back from DDC. So mm -hmm. I think as the stakeholder here, the organization, which is the Lower East Side Ecology Center, who has this commitment from the administration, we need to sit down with the construction people that are in charge of making this a reality and together with parks, of course, to really figure out how to get this done. Yeah. And uh, I'll, Parker, I'll report. Parker, if you don't mind. Yeah. So the uh, my understanding is, um, by the way, my name is Damri. I'm the construction project manager on the DDC, and so that everyone understands why I'm giving the feedback. Um, so my understanding here is that the uh, compost yard is in the design phase. It's, it's the understanding that Parks and our DDC design group are, are working this through with the logistics that are necessary for the design and how is it going to get implemented and constructed to turn over at the time when the park is open, but on the construction aspect on our end, we don't have that anticipation or the understanding as, as yet. So by all means, I highly recommend that a meeting be called with parks and for parks to bring in the necessary party that will be able to provide feedback. Thanks. Yeah, and just again, from my perspective, and I don't want to make this about the campus yard, but uh, I just have to say something about this. Uh, we had a finished design that was, uh, you know, many moons ago that was um, okayed by the Public Design Commission. So it's 
it's not like the design process is something that's just starting. It, it started three years ago and uh, there were plenty, uh, there's plenty of plants that really went to, uh, you know, to the point of really being um, a finalized design that was, um, that was presented to the agencies that have jurisdiction over it. So I just want to make clear that this design process that you're referring to is something that the agency parks uh, is uh, has been completed and um, so it's not like we're starting from scratch trying to figure out how to design a compost yard Christine, thank you i don't know can you hear me this is jeff margolis from ddc we hear you jeff. yes i yes. can okay. hear you no i was just gonna say you know we we flagged again we we, we, we certainly understand all of everything you said. I think DDC itself didn't didn't think it was appropriate for us just to meet with you, as Parker mentioned. Again, this is a collective effort. So I think, again, we, we heard your request at the in the past and then again at the community board meeting. So we, what we did is we flagged for the other agencies in City Hall, uh, Deputy Mayor Joshi's office, who you mentioned uh, a short while ago. So I will do that again to see if we can get the collective team together to sit down with you and address all the questions at once about timing. Uh, as Damri said, there has to be some coordination internally at TDC about the design and the construction ends. And then uh, the design itself, again, we, we work with parks and DSNY specifically on this project. So on the compost yard itself. So we will, I'll take it upon DDC to, to take the lead on getting that meeting scheduled with you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. No problem. Okay, should I, should I go ahead and go, Paula? You can go ahead, Diane. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, Parker and, and everyone else who has chimed in about the compost yard, I want to, um, you know, just second the fact that it's not just the single organization, the Lower East Side Ecology Center, that is interested in, in making sure that the compost yard is back in the park in a timely way. It's many organizations, including my own, um, who have, uh, who really strongly believe in the need for um, environmental education and compost education and uh, really are, you know, have been advocating for this all along and we want to see um, this get done. So um, we strongly encourage you to, you know, get that happening. Um, and to also, especially to clarify the language in that letter, which is a couple of years old, because it says, uh, you know, at the, at, the, at the end of construction, the compost yard will be worked on. But now that the construction is spanning over, you know, a long period of time, and there, you know, been some some changes in the phasing schedule, um, I think some clarification on what that means. I'm hope, assuming <clears throat> that the the sensible thing for it to mean is that it's part of the construction of uh, the south end of the the, you know, uh, the East River Park, and you know, it can happen in parallel to work that's being done at the north end and it's not like we have to wait for the whole park to get done before we can have the compost dried back um right. so if you guys can clarify those dates and and the meaning of that that would be awesome and then parker i have one more question and i thought i saw someone from dot actually on the zoom um so desiree had reported last month that um or I think at the community board, that the pinch point between Stuyvesant Cove and East River Park is remaining closed due to DOT work. She had just heard about it uh, right before the presentation and was hoping to find out a little bit more about a target date to reopen that. Is there anyone on the call who can speak to when the target for reopening that, that space is? Hi, Diane. Um, this is Kate Scherer from um, Manhattan Borough Commissioner's Office at DOT. I will have to um, double check on that for you. Okay. Um, there is no uh, currently scheduled um, CB3 parks meeting in July. Um, so if you guys could try to bring that back um, either to Paula and Tara and they'll share the information with us or at the latest at the next CAG meeting, that would be great. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Wendy Vendemaris. 
Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, I'm going to follow up on one of Frank's regarding Pier 42 and the bike lane that's adjacent to there. You know, we had a world class greenway in East River Park that moved thousands of people a day. Um, who is in charge of the bike lane, the greenway adjacent to Pier 42? The like the construction of the greenway or the what um, agency will own it? Who can I talk to about the fact that it's from what I can see on the drawings, just 11 feet wide for a two way bike lane that's very going to be very busy, whereas up at um, Sci Cove, the bike lane is closer to 16 feet wide. We are really getting shorted there and uh, right on the bikeway. Right next to the bikeway, there's a parking lot. To me, it would be better to make the space wider for the people who are using non-polluting transportation mm -hmm. and using that space to come and go. Thousands of people used it. And yet, and it's one of these, you know, uh, carbon sparing practices like composting that we don't get to do anymore in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So what are we gonna do about this? Um, so I, for who's going to be responsible after construction, I believe. Or during construction. Who's responsible for it right now? Is it EDC so or DOT? The, I believe after the, it will, it'll be turned over after construction to DOT and parks, but I'll double check and let you know. Um, for right now, the there's a detour which has been developed in coordination with DOT um, for the Greenway detour that goes up Pike and then around to get back into the park at Houston. Um, that was coordinated in, with DOT for Esker construction with like between D, D, DC and DOT. Yes, I'm aware of that, that you've moved people about, about a mile away to use a bike lane. I'm aware of that. Um, but I would like to know going forward, is there anything we can do about this absolutely minimalistic bike path that is planned for there? In five feet is like really very little when people are moving quickly and moving at different speeds. So I'll leave it at that. Yes? Is that different? Parker, on that aspect, what we could do is um, we could reach out to the construction team for them to review the, the drawings to see what is the anticipation here as a final construction. Um, if that's not final, maybe it's temporary and because of the construction, it is narrowed, but we can go back and have the construction team review the plan and give us the anticipation so we can brief the group here of the final expectation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I had asked about that last month and we was referred to the final uh, uh, PDC drawings, which show only a small section of that bike, of that greenway. It would be great to know how wide it is all the way across. And, um, you know, you're putting the bicyclers right next to the uh, emissions from the vehicles as well. Not very good. Take a long time for trees to come in to shade it and to clean that air. Speaking of which, um, we're now at hazardous, almost hazard, hazardous for some background air in New York City. Is there, when you, we talked about this two years ago, um, Jeff, that there was not a, there was not a, a limit on how bad the background air had to be. Has anything changed now that we're in a new era of air quality? where the so, city is being very hazardous, et cetera. We follow the guidance of the city and the Office of Emergency Management when it comes to stopping work for on the construction site. Um, I'm not positive what the threshold is with the air quality, uh, the poor air quality coming from the wildfire smoke, um, but I can try and find out and get back to you on if, if there's a threshold. You know, some of the poor air quality comes from the FDR, it comes from the construction. So let's not forget that there's something we can do about some of that, including right. even messaging people not to drive so much. Um, I noticed there's no shade at all on pages 11 and 12 that Stico, really sad to see that. Um, and, um, you know, I have a couple, I, 
there's there is another uh, question here. Um, I'll let it go on to Damaris, who has her hand up. But it's you know um, so much of what's happening right now really does have a, a profound health effect on this community. And because we do not have the protection of trees, oh, I know what it was. I would just went over the bridge at. Um, um, Houston Street again into the park as you, and you go down now the north side of the ramp you go into the park and you're on what has now become a highway for construction vehicles uh, Avenue F and they've left like a little tiny space on the side for people pedestrians mm -hmm. if you had a, someone with a wheelchair and wanted to walk next to them you wouldn't be able to in the tiny walking space that was left there so those that's just bollards that are tacked down could that be widened so it can be used by you know a family a baseball team and not give 22 feet to the the motor vehicles that are going through there give the public a little space um, so I think that we've spoken with the contractor about trying to widen the space and right now it's uh, five feet, which is the standard and I don't think they can widen it and widen it anymore. Um, well, take a look. You've got 20 or more feet there that are being used by the vehicles. Most vehicles can get through a car lane right on the, on, on the roadway mm -hmm. without 20 feet. Right. And I right. realized, OK, you need a little buffer there, but it mm -hmm. just seems that's the only way into the park for most people now. Right. That's right. how they're coming in. It's completely unwelcoming. It's and then you're shunted off over to the corner. You're not even allowed to, like, walk next to each other. You have to walk single file. From there. It's, yeah. it's just really not nice. We can bring it back up with the contractor, but we have we have asked previously and have been told that for both the safety of the, the pedestrians and separating them with enough space from the trucks, that that's the widest that it can be. But we'll let, we'll ask again and let you know. Thank you. Maris? Thank you. Um, just real quick, Wendy, are you talking about uh, temporary access or are you talking about that that's the permanent access that's being built into the park. I'm talking about the temporary access. Okay, okay. Got it. I'm going to be really brief. I just wanted to support the composting discussion. And so really what I wanted to know is uh, what can the CAG do to support DDC um, in its effort to appeal to the other um, agencies to move forward with having a meeting for the ecology center so that we could get a head start on this. I mean, not a head start. I mean, it's been in the wings for a while. So I know that people want to move forward, but what can we do concretely to help support that effort? Is there a letter that we wrote in the past? Can we update it? Can we resend it? What can we do? And would that require, this is to Paula and to Tara, um, I guess, and to the rest of the group, if we are to take an action on behalf of moving this forward, it moves it in a different direction from Christine just requesting it, it's the CAG requesting it, and do we need to have a formal vote from the CAG in order to move forward with that? And that's all I have. The mayor is, uh, is this is Dan Marie. So as our lead, uh, Jeffrey Magolis, he is the lead of our DDC InterGov. As he acknowledged, he's gonna take this as a lead on his end and bring it to the front to all the necessary party to make sure that some action um, is taken. And then hopefully by the next CAG meeting, uh, Parker will be able to give some update as per where I, we I are. I got that, Dan Marie. I, that's not what I'm okay, asking, actually. I hear you, I hear you. What but... I'm asking you is what can we do as a CAG? I don't mean to cut you off, but time is important. So I'm asking you, what can the CAG do to support Jeff so that he's not, you know, so he has, some ability to say the CAG is asking for this or, the, or forthcoming. I get what you're saying, but I don't want to wait until next meeting to, for y'all to come back and say, you know, we put in the request, we haven't heard anything back. So if Jeffrey is on, we'll ask Jeffrey to weigh in to see uh, what support he, uh, he I, Thank you. I'm already uh, 
texting folks and emailing. Again, Jeff Margolis, to Michael's point, sorry, Jeff Margolis from GDC. I'm already texting people and emailing as we speak. Uh, so I will do my best. I know maybe some folks are out the end of this week and early next week, but hopefully we can meet first as a city and then come back to you, Christine, in the CAG with updates. And in the, CAG, in the CAG only portion, we can talk about um, what the CAG would like to do to um, support moving this forward. It would require a vote and a rewrite of the letter, but um, yeah, we can discuss. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Charles? Yeah, hi, I'm Charles Crizet with Lungs. Um, I'm concerned about the 140 violations of the air quality that happened in May, which is four a day. And I'm wondering what you guys can do as uh, I'm sure the situation this summer is going to get worse as far as air quality is concerned just because of the heat and everything else and also the wildfires. What can be done from your point of view to help the situation? Um, so the contractor is do it has increased the uh, passes of the site by the water truck to reduce um, the amount of dust in in the in the project area. The PMCM and IPC, the contractor, are invest now investigating every single alert as soon as it happens, um, and are developing in the process of working together to develop new protocols to mitigate dust and ensure this doesn't happen again. Um, the majority do appear right now to be coming from Pier 42, uh, which we don't have control over at this time, um, or we we won't have control over, but they, they're they also supposed to be finishing construction later this year. I understand you don't have control over it, but we are all breathing that air. Uh, we are all suffering. From the consequences, how much of the fill debris has to do with the air quality? So the, you guys are dumping all this fill into the area. The fill has start delivery started in June, and the numbers these the reporting that we had in this presentation was all for May. So we don't that doesn't reflect the fill deliveries, and the numbers have been improving in June. Um, so uh, going forward, you you guys feel like you're on top of the situation or, or are you at all concerned that things are going to have to be shut down because of the smoke from Canada and uh, whatever else is happening in your situation? Um, the, the PMCM feels on top of it and is doing, you know, they, they, they're aware that May had a very high number of exceedances and is responding accordingly to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Then the is, pill does not appear to be affecting the air quality monitoring system. Is there a level of pollution in which you would be forced to shut down the operation for a day or an hour or something like that? So anytime that the alert goes off, the um, the contractor stop, has to stop work to mitigate the dust or, in, or if they even if the alarm doesn't go off then they can if they see dust they have to stop work to mitigate the dust but we follow the epa's guidelines for the permissible exposure limit and we have a on our website you can read more about the air quality monitoring program we have a fact sheet um, I, if someone from our team could drop that in the chat uh, maybe that would be helpful choice, perhaps. All right. All right. Well, thank you. I'm just concerned about this going forward. The summer is going to be pretty hot, I would imagine, and uh, pretty dusty. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Okay, so with that, we will um, conclude this portion of the meeting and um, we'll just take a like a three minute break. Um, 501, 502 will resume and start the CAG portion. So thank you all for um, agency reps for being here. Thank you. Thanks everyone, you all have a nice evening. Thank you everyone and have a good uh, holiday however you choose to spend it. I look forward to seeing you again soon.
Thank you. Are we taking a couple minutes or? Yes, we're going to take a couple minutes. So we're going to resume at 5.02. All right, everyone, and we're going to resume. Um, I think Paula might have dropped off the meeting. Oh, temporarily. Oh, you're back. Okay. I tried to send you a message and it didn't go through. It says you're not here. That was weird. Um, so, um, Paul, do you want to kick off um, with regard to, I guess, you know, we, we heard, I guess we can maybe we start at the compost yard as a first item? Just since it's fresh in the mind. Oh, I know every, yeah, I think we're just having internet issues. Um, so I will say we don't have, uh, we don't have quorum at the moment. Um, and I know there, it, we don't, it would be quite a process to agree to vote, to agree to do a letter and then vote on the letter. Um, so what I'm going to propose since it's a relatively straightforward ask um, is that we just draft a letter and <laughs> Of folks vote on it um, um, so we can um, work on getting that drafted, hopefully, if not tomorrow, um, definitely early next week. Um, since again, it's relatively straightforward ask, um, but I do see that Susan and Wendy both had their hand raised. So I'll uh, start off with Susan. Okay, thank you. I was just gonna say that, you know, it's, there's been plenty of time for parks and the DDC to get this composting uh, situation Straight, and it's really absurd that we're at this point right now. And I certainly think we should be writing a letter of, of support. Thank you. Wendy? Yeah, and I, you know, I don't know what um, the development trajectory is for the compost center, but I do know that it takes time for 
monies to come in and pieces to be in place from an organizational perspective. And it's really so unfair of the city to do this. I would actually like to propose that the CAG um, have an over, uh, ask for an oversight hearing. We are hearing from that they don't know how long it's gonna take for the fill to settle. It could be some unknown amount of years. <clears throat> they, there's parts of the park that are supposed to be open that are actually closed. So we're really getting close to that 42%. There's um, so many questions about projects that sort of stopped and started out there. It's very unclear in so many ways. And I think it's really time for city council to have a, a hearing about the progress of this project in part to help planning in the future of other projects avoid some of the errors that are being made in this one. You know, to hear that this is, you know, we all know this has not been done before. And we're hearing more and more in the news that future projects that are for resiliencies, like what they just uh, talked about in Battery Park City, they're getting a little wall, like what PA2 got. And we should have gotten a little wall. They wouldn't have had to destroy the entire park if there had been a little wall on the west side of the FDR. And that was never studied. It was one of the options listed in the DEIS and not studied for this end side of the park. So we're the losers for it. Our air is bad. We have no park. We have no place to meet community. Tompkins Square Park is closed now. There's so much other, um, you know, we've lost half a core Lears. There's so much other loss for this community when you think about, you know, open space and there's been no effort to get people free rides on the ferry to nearby parks. We don't have an accessible subway station. You know, it goes on and on where, where the problems are for this community, which is an EJ community. And we have a lot of vulnerable people here who could really benefit by having some open space. I think it's time for a hearing. And I don't know if other people, but, oh, I see Susan. Is, thank you, Susan, is saying that. So I'm sorry your internet's in and out. But, you know, <clears throat> maybe we can get some, even some standards that are understandable about when work should stop. Maybe even for the good of the workers when the air quality is so terrible. Maybe Paula is still out, I don't know. Um, but that's the main thing I wanna say. And also that we, I was just out there. It's only 80, about 80 degrees right now. It is broiling hot. So are we discussing the compost letter? Um, well, no, the, I think for the, what we'll do, as I said, draft a letter, um, get it out to the group. Of course, we will please, um, vote as quickly as you can, encourage others who were not attending this meeting to do so as well. Um, so we're not going to vote on the on whether or not to do the letter, we're just gonna do it. And if folks um, don't feel comfortable, they will vote against sending the letter, um, but just in the interest of time, because we do know um, it's a holiday. And then, and to be honest, um, it just takes time to get votes um, through. Um, I know since um, Wendy, the last um, point you made um, with, with regard to heat, um, one of the things that we did want to talk about um, is shade. Um, I will, I see Michael raised his hand, so I would, I'll defer to Michael for a moment. Sorry, yeah, I, this is not compost related, uh, but it's just, I, I'm wondering if, and unfortunately it looks like Dove from East River had to drop off, but um, I, I sort of, you know, chuckle when Parker mentions the water truck because we have never, ever, ever once seen anything being watered down. So is there any way that we can ask them to give us a schedule of how often that watering is happening or when it's happening? Or, you know, I mean, we have 800 residents in my building alone that oversee that park and not one of them have ever said they've seen every, anything being watered down. Definitely, that's something that we can just email um, Parker and Desiree to about so we can do that. Thank you.
So Paul, I'm gonna pass over to you. I, I know we wanted to talk about um, everyone, the concerns that were raised by email regarding shade. I think you're muted. Sorry. Yes, I was muted and my internet is just unbelievably in and out and lately mostly out. Um, so yeah, pivoting over to the shade question, um, I might turn it over to Diane, but there's been some, D Diane and Wendy have indicated some interest in, um, you know, maybe the CAG doing some more formal advocacy on, um, things related to shade and more specifically the notion of advocating for faster growing trees, you know, so that, that we get shade faster and uh, quicker in the park. Um, but I will, I will turn it over to Diane to see if you, how you want to pose this to the CAG. Yeah, I, it's, it's coming out of specific feedback that we're hearing about the street tree plantings. So, the street trees that are being planted as one of the mitigations for Esker, people are very excited um, to see their trees, but a number of people have are, are feeling when they look at these trees that they are bigger and faster growing than the ones that are scheduled for all of the waterfront parks. So Sty Cove, East River Park, Pier 42. And so, uh, you know, when the subject of shade came up, I think that, you know, our question is, can we, can we engage with the city a little bit to talk about, is, is that the case? Are people understanding this correctly, that the trees that are being planted inland are, you know, bigger, more mature, and more likely to grow quickly than the ones that we're getting at the waterfront? Because when they're looking at the plantings at Pier 42 and Sty Cove, they feel like those are little bitty trees. Um, and then if there is a difference, and if we are getting smaller trees in the waterfront parks, is there any way that we can advocate for, um, you know, bigger ones that will grow faster because, um, you know, the unshaded areas um, are going to be extremely hot and sunny, um, and the weather's only going to get hotter. Um, and it would be a shame to have this beautiful new park and then have people reluctant to use it on a summer day because there's nowhere they can go for, for shade, for respite. So that, that was the question that I wanted to bring to the CAG. Is anyone else hearing questions about the, you know, feeling that there's a discrepancy between what we're getting planted inland on the streets and what is scheduled to be planted in the parks? Um, is anyone else hearing, you know, questions and concerns about that? Um, Susan, is your hand raised from before? No, it's, this is new. Um, okay. I did, <clears throat> I did want to respond to Diane Lake and then make one more comment. Okay, uh, go. I, was, I was so disturbed, frankly, when I saw what the northern end of Stico Park looked like with those little scrawny plantings. And I remember what it was so marvelous before to go to the waterfront and there was so much shade. It was just lovely. And I know eventually it will grow, but I don't know. I may be six feet under when it does. Maybe they can use my body to compost it. I don't know. But anyway, um, but I just wanted to, to uh, support Wendy um, in her. I, I think there are a lot of issues. I think the community, particularly Project Area 1, is getting shortchanged in a lot of ways. And I think that to some degree, we're getting a lot of pablum from the city agencies. And I think it's time that we... Uh, <laughs> shook the non-existent trees and um, just got some kind of hearing and, and got all of these things out. Thank you. Does anyone else want to um, respond to Diane as far as shade? Oh, sorry, Frank, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. Um, thanks, Diane. I I haven't heard or noticed. Um, I do. It almost feels sad that I have to say this, but um, I'm in support of ESCR because I value the lives of affordable housing folks over the lives of trees. Um, but having said that, I think that uh, Little Island should be the barometer for the plantings along any of the East River Park systems. If they can do it, 
Uh, and I took pictures and I brought this up with uh, DDC, uh, I think it was like last year or something, uh, because I was hoping maybe we can get a tour of that park and find out how they devised and, and what they came up with their strategies for that park. Uh, because uh, they opened it shortly thereafter once they finished their plantings and uh, uh, you know, there's still room for growth, um, but uh, I thought it was it's, it was pretty sufficient as a canopy cover just in some areas right upon opening. Uh, so I think that shows that it's definitely possible. Um, and uh, I think that we should probably just clarify. I know that I had information received from the city about the caliber size that they have, uh, but, uh, you know, maybe someone just needs to actually uh, do a little fact checking to see if that is gonna measure up. Um, but in any case, uh, that would be my response. And uh, I, I think uh, it would be uh, reasonable for the CAG just to inquire um, rather than accuse, but inquire and, and have uh, some factual clarification. And I think regarding uh, Michael's comments about water spraying, uh, I think that easily is solved, I mean, you know, they have to record and demonstrate that they're actually doing it. And photographs or video is one of the easiest ways to do just that. Um, but uh, that's it. So uh, Diane, if you wanted to do something vis-a-vis -vis the CAG, um, I would be on board in terms of your, your request and, and clarification on the tree plantings. Any other comments or observations about shade and trees, Wendy? So, um, you know, the trees that are being planted are between, I'm pretty sure, three and three and a half inch calipers. That is a six or seven year old tree. As far as I recall, that's what's coming into the park. And I don't know this different species and how fast or slow they grow. But I do know that if they're properly watered their first two or three years, they're much more likely to thrive. So to me, the question is, what is the maintenance plan? And is it just the contractor who's going to be, you know, responsible? Or is there, is there going to be somebody whose job it really is to take care of all these new trees? Otherwise, it's, you know, they're like what happened right after Sandy. So many of the things that had just been planted died because nobody watered them all winter. We don't really need to have a whole other series of losses like that again. Any other comments about shade? Oh, if and not, also Sty Cove has not, you know, you if you go, has anybody been up there, walked up there and um, felt the heat bouncing off all that white concrete? You get like sunburn from below there. It's it's really unpleasant. And, and, there's, there's, and there's no, if you look at the images, not a single shade structure planned there. And it's not good for the people who live in the neighborhood, and it's not good for the people who work in the park. So I, I think we've established that there's, you know, a, a legitimate level of, of concern and legitimate questions to ask about this. So are there suggestions about how to move forward? Is it as simple as at least just starting with asking DDC these questions? Curious about your thoughts. I was just thinking that it would be helpful um, because probably DDC is not going to answer the questions. It would have to be parks, right? Um, that's who's come to talk about, you know, the trees, uh, the, you know, the, the new tree plantings, whenever we've asked about it. Um, and it's not just trees that they're planting, you know, they have other things, you know, designed in as well. So I was thinking that we should invite them or, you know, let Desiree know that we'd like parks or representative from parks who's knowledgeable about this uh, to come and talk to us about um, that, you know, what we can expect and 
to let Desiree and that, that parks representative know in advance that one of the reasons we're asking about this is that people are reacting to the street trees that they're getting. Um, because yeah, I've got one next door to my building that was planted in early April and it's definitely way more than seven feet tall. <laughs> um, it's up to the second story of that building already. So th that's what's spurring the question. So if we could give them some context um, and make sure that, you know, someone who is knowledgeable from parks and can really talk about this with us would come, I think that would be a good start. Okay, that's definitely doable. We'll, we'll see where it leads, but um, we'll put that on, on our to-do list. Thank you. Of course. Anything else? I guess we can adjourn then. Tara, do you have anything else to add before we um, appreciate Nothing else to add. I will try to get this out, this um, the letter form and the Google form for folks to vote out tomorrow. I will try, but we also ha I have another deadline, unfortunately. So it might be Monday, which I know it's a holiday weekend, um, not ideal, but um, if we could definitely try to work on getting everyone's vote in in time, um, if you know, if, if the vote passes to try to get it out by the end of the week, that would be great. So um, that would definitely need your help, but then also the help of those who um, have not been present. Trevor? Yeah, just a quick question, and I might have missed an email. I know we did a survey for meeting about the job uh, discussion. Yes, Has and that, that no, that is also something on my list. Unfortunately, I've I've, I've just had some um, family emergencies this past month, um, so I've been I haven't been able to schedule the meeting. So those who have expressed interest, I will be sending you all a separate email and a, not another doodle um, to set aside a time for us to meet. Not um, next week, but the week of um, that would be the tenth. Um, so I will um, also send you all an email, if not tomorrow, then definitely Monday. So That's my fine. apologies on that. Yeah, no, no problem. If we could also make sure that we kind of close it quickly because we, we're all very busy. This is all a group of leaders here and we may have a date and then within two or three days we're in the conflict. So if we could just wrap it up pretty quickly, that'd be helpful. Absolutely. Wendy? I'm, I'm just going to reiterate that, you know, folks, we're the only body overseeing this whole operation. That's it. We're it. Half of us never show up or rarely show up to the meeting. We don't have quorum today, as usual. And here we are. And we have a lot of a mess going on and no oversight. I don't know where our elected officials are. Why aren't they stepping up to say, let's take a closer look at this operation? What can we learn from it? What can we improve going forward? There's still a whole lot more misery to come, especially for people who live along Avenue D as a parallel conveyance and all of that gets put in. You know, tons more activity out here. And I really would like to have us seriously consider having an oversight hearing. Frank? Excuse me. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to make sure that people in here are aware. There are a lot of leaders along the waterfront who have other meetings with DDC and related agencies. Uh, so I don't know that I would agree on this concept of there is no oversight and different bodies and that this CAG is the only one. Um, and this CAG is advisory. Uh, and I also think that uh, if there is a question about the attendance and how this CAG evolved. Uh, I mean, first of all, it is July. Uh, but secondly, uh, I don't know that it's really fair to judge uh, this body based on, um, well, what I want to say is removing, holistically speaking, how this whole CAG has been operating. Um, I, you know, I think that there is unequal weight uh, com coming out of this CAG. Uh, and again, it's just, uh, I just think there's more explanation than just simply saying that, you know, we are the only oversight body and yet people aren't attending. Um, I don't think that's actually correct. Um, and I, I only can say that because of conversations I have with other leaders and 
Um, I know from my perspective, being here at Gouverneur Gardens, uh, I'm having tons of ancillary meetings, uh, and it's where I got a lot of my information from. And uh, I, I think that that is, and it's germane because we're dealing with the city in certain negotiations. And I think that might be the case with other developments as well. But I don't know, I can't speak for anybody else. And also, I just want to acknowledge that um, um, we do have representation from Carlina Rivera's office, council member, um, and virtually every meeting um, they are here, as well as the other electeds, they generally drop off um, during the first half, but Carlina's office always stays through the, to the very end. So um, you know, I'm sure they're they're um, taking notes back um, to, as far as um, any concerns, but um, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge that as well. And, and also to acknowledge that, you know, some people, their um, concerns have already been addressed. Um, I know very, Martin very, made it very clear last month that we would likely not see him as often, if not at all, um, because, you know, um, a lot of what's been, or his concerns have already been addressed through um, PA2. So that that's another thing. Um, I think some people are just happy to see that the, 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 the work is progressing and they just wanna make sure that it's completing um, in a timely manner. Is there anything else? Take care, everyone. Don't blow your fingers off this weekend. <laughs> everyone have a good weekend. And we'll definitely work on getting out that letter for vote um, next week as or early, early as next week at the very latest, um, as well as coordinating for the um, hiring meeting. And I will also get the, we didn't receive the flyer from De, likely probably because Desiree's been out, but we will get that flyer um, regarding the job fair um, for distribution for all of your um, folks that work with you. Tara, let me just, uh, I was trying to be a little hesitant, um, uh, but I just wanted to explain for some folks because maybe some people care, maybe they don't, but uh, I was uh, attending another meeting uh, recently about BMC are and uh, what I heard from DDC at that meeting was that they were going to be uh, um, uh, really only dealing they, their only um, task with dealing with management um, of different developments for notices uh, and uh, I found that to be really surprising and a little bit shocking because there are a lot of uh, in the affordable housing landscape, there are a lot of managers that aren't so great. Um, so that's why I brought that up. I just wanted to share that background. And it may not affect some people here, but it, it does have an effect because if the manager isn't getting a notice or isn't doing their job or has a million other things and doesn't attend to it, um, the residents uh, and the people who could benefit aren't going to be notified. So I just I'm, I'm sorry. Can I can I just ask for a little clarification? Because yeah. I joined the meeting at, at like four ten. Was it that the the jobs piece? They said that they're not going to work with individual groups and they're just going to do outreach through management agencies. Is that what they're saying? No, no, Damaris. It's, what I'm saying is, is I'm concerned that that's what they're doing because that's what I heard from the BMCR project perspective. So I don't know if that's the same now for ESCR. But that notice um, that that I missed the first two minutes of whatever how uh, that was presented today, uh, that was that showed up thankfully in one of my buildings, but I hadn't I just didn't catch wind of it. And most of the time, when it comes to anything DDC related, resiliency project related, I have to kind of prod uh, my management to put those notices up and make sure that. It goes up on our um, like our email list serve. Uh, so I didn't I was it didn't come across my desk. So I'm just wondering what I heard in BMCR, if that's really their strategy with uh, ESCR. Uh, it seems reasonable that it would be the same. And that's what I'm saying here. So because we at the CAG brought up hiring as just something that is an important issue for us, uh, it just seems strange to me that it didn't like they didn't send it to the CAG to send out to the members. Does that make sense? Yes, but I also wanted to say, I don't know, maybe I should have raised my hand. Um, you know, what people don't in this neighborhood, obviously, like, thanks for letting us know about your Brooklyn job fair. <laughs> I was waiting for that, yeah. I mean, but like, honestly, like, that is the most ludicrous thing. And that, 
they sent we're we're trying to meet with them to figure out like how we can support this in a different way and hold them more accountable and they sent this to my team and asked them for feedback and my team just couldn't even bring themselves to respond honestly because they were like I don't understand this is for Brooklyn like it's this is not what we're talking about yeah, I think that's fair. For me, I just always want to get as any hiring information out to my residents whenever possible. Uh, and it, it it really was more about highlighting the concern. Is this the new strategy going forward that like they're going to only like send it off to you know management agents? That, that's yeah, no, I hear that. But I'm yeah. just saying that in general, the content of the flyer <laughs> itself and the effort behind what they're doing, I also want to caution us in thinking that they're addressing the issues that we are concerned about when we talked about the jobs that were created and were distributed among our community. When you distribute a flyer like that among us and that's what you come and you talk to us about, in some ways I feel like it creates a sense that they are taking our concerns at hand. And I don't think that that is the case if you, what you're bringing to us is about a job fair in Brooklyn when we're telling you that we need to see more activity in our own community around this particular project in a real concrete way. So, you know, I appreciate I that they yeah, shared yeah. it with us. I do. But I also want to caution this body in accepting that kind of response as enough. Let, Let me just follow up to what Frank said as a pure example. When they did the test water uh, shutdown for my building, we we're in BMCR. <laughs> they gave the notice to management and the management didn't get us to notice until after the water shut down. I mean, that has since changed, but to Frank's point about getting it to people, even though this is a Brooklyn thing, I think that's a different point than, than Frank is talking about. But to no, make I sure know that, that I know I'm not making the same point. I'm sorry. No, I know. I'm just I'm just giving an example based on real life experience <laughs> of what Frank is talking about. We get did get them to notify tenant leaders, but they were just giving it to building management. And we need to make sure that if they ever have a Manhattan one, that it goes to to other groups, people, tenant leaders than just building management. You know, listening to all, all of these concerns today and um, having been to some other meetings, I have heard uh, the DDC representatives say that for other projects outside of Esker, they don't have the same reporting requirements because there's no formal agreement with any part of the community, with any city council representatives, that, you know, there's no CAG, there's, there's nothing official. Um, they just have some basic, you know, a public messaging expectations and, and responsibilities. Um, <clears throat> and so what concerns me is that, um, you know, what we're hearing is, is that they are actually not, not notifying they are actually not doing a great job of it because they don't have to because there's nothing required so um i know that i've heard them say that more than once when asked why are you not doing x or y or z particularly for bmcr and they say well because we don't have the same requirements there's there's no agreement in place like there is for esker would agree no air quality requirements no hiring requirements even though it's a section three a lot of things that and, and, and people may say what they want about ESCR, but there are a lot of things that they have to do that they don't do on any projects in the city at all, mm -hmm. at, not even close to it. And BMCR is a prime example. I'm just saying, I agree. And I have a question, really, maybe it's for Damaris. Um, and, you know, over the last couple of meetings when we've been talking about employment, one of the big questions has been about training. How can people get training? And I did see the word training.